<laughs> Originally, I was not gonna make a video for this game because I'd had kind of a long day and I have a new job starting tomorrow and it's hockey related, that's fun. But after watching how that game ended, I just had to, I had to. You got, you, uh, you understand, right? I mean, if you didn't watch it, I guess you wouldn't, but I, I would seriously suggest if you're at all able to access like ESPN Plus or a stream of that game, I would go back and watch that third period. The Vegas Golden Knights win. <laughs> <laughs> Three to two against the Winnipeg Jets, formerly Atlanta Thrashers. I also debated because, I mean, hey, putting up a Coyotes jersey because, I mean, that's also technically accurate, but I decided against it because that would be unfair to Coyotes fans and Thrashers fans don't really care, right? Jets fans might, but <laughs> losers can't be choosers. I'm sorry, that was rude. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just, you know, it, it's all in the name of the game. It's fun, right? And if you beat us eight times in a row and 14 out of the last 15, 12 out of the last 13, 14, I don't know, in between there, including playoffs, then, you know, I fully expect it back, no big deal, totally expected. So in like three years, if that's the case, in 10 years, if that's the case, when Vegas finally decides to rebuild in like 20 years, if that's the case, go for it. So all game, it was Hellebuck versus the Golden Knights, really. And Winnipeg did a decent job in general, limiting high danger chances, but there were high danger chances and Halibuck stopped every single one of them. And they scored, uh, was it the first shot of the game for them? I don't know, it was like the first period. No, it really wasn't. I was gonna compare it to the Edmonton Vegas game from a couple of weeks ago, but like it really wasn't because Vegas was really controlling the play against the Winnipeg Jets for the first two periods. And it did not show on the scorecard because Connor frickin' Hellebuck. I did not miss playing against Connor Hellebuck when we played against Comrie uh, during Black Friday. And Howden had a decent chance, Eichel, Barbie, like they all, Adoro had this one chance where he just kinda like whiffed on it. I don't know if it caught the heel of a stick or something. It had like no velocity going towards the net. And it seemed like in general, the puck luck for the Vegas Golden Knights was just not there. On top of the fact that we had to go past the arguably, but probably, like, less arguably, best goalie in the NHL right now. Winnipeg, oh my goodness, this came out on, well, I guess it didn't really come out of nowhere, but like, to this extent? Are you kidding me? You guys are surprised, right? Fantastic start to the year. And I am happy for you guys, honestly. And I'm also happy we beat you, <laughs> because for Vegas, I don't know what it is, but after long breaks, they always seem to lose that first game. And it's on the road against a team that is higher in the standings than us, has had a better season so far. I, I was kind of thinking Vegas was going to lose, but I never, in my mind, bet against Vegas to win, especially because in the third period, they'd managed to do spectacular. And so even though we were down one nothing against a seemingly unstoppable force in Connor Hellebuck, I was like, yeah, we can score. I was not expecting it to be Keegan freaking Colazar, even though that was a seventh goal of the season. He's like, uh, it's in his hometown, hometown hero, Keegan Colazar, fantastic, super happy for that guy. He, he's, it's not like it was two, three years ago with him scoring, where it was like, where did that come from? No, this is, he's, he's this year specifically been more steady for presence, although that's his first point in the last, what, seven, eight games. I, yeah, nope, after how Hellebuck was playing, I was, shocked that Colazar is the person that got the puck past him. Uh, but it was tie game. And then <laughs> a couple of minutes later, Josh Morrissey seems to erase all of my belief that Vegas was actually gonna steal a point from Connor Hellebuck tonight. It was a very uh, unusual break for the Jets where they had odd, an odd man rush the other way and they convert on it. Josh Morrissey just sends it in from the point and it goes past Hill and it's a beautiful shot from Morrissey, and the Jets go up 2-1, and I'm like, oh man, okay, well, we, we, we made it interesting in the third, as Vegas typically does, and so, <laughs> for good and for bad, memories back to 2019 flashing through my head, but, <laughs> thank you, Vegas Golden Refs. <laughs> Glad to, glad to see my Venmo went through, uh, because, yeah, uh, to start the, th third period today, Vegas had a power play. 
and it was from like eight seconds had drifted past uh, from the end of the second period when the penalty was called, but immediately, like I guess 20 seconds in was not immediate. Neil Pionk uh, draws a call from Jack Eichel, and it, I don't like that call because he what he does is he chicken wings Jack Eichel's stick, which then means the ref called hooking on Jack Eichel, even though Pionk is the one that initiated all of that. That That's not how the penalty works, although it, I guess, technically can be, but that's not because Jack Eichel did anything wrong. So, yeah, I don't know if, like, that was just frowned upon or whatnot, but Vegas, with, like, two and a half, three minutes to go, uh, there's a tripping call. Oh, well, let me get the exact fact-checking. Gabe Velarde, two-minute minor for tripping, Shea Theodore, and then 13 seconds later, Dylan DeMello for a two-minute minor for tripping, Mark Stone. And... I mean, Jets fans in the arena chanted refs you suck after the second penalty because like, are you really gonna call that with less than three minutes to go in a one goal game when they already have a penalty? Which is like a valid point because some refs won't. They'll just not call the rule book with that amount of time. And it's funny you're hearing me say about the rule book after I said how Neil Pionks is, yeah. But you, like, you know the difference, right? Like, versus an actual infraction when you're already on the penalty kill, versus, uh, in, like, a, uh, <laughs> uh, just, it, it's different. It really is. But, uh, Vegas drew two penalties, and they were legitimate penalties that were softer, but legitimate, compared to Pionk's not at all, like, both, like, soft and not really legit anyway. And then they pull Hill as soon as they get possession of the puck. They are passing as elite. They have one opportunity that the Jets did a really good job of blocking the lanes. And it took Vegas a little bit to start generating those lanes, but once they started passing, and it was like, bing, oh, bang, ba bada boom, bada ba ba boom, pow. Oh! If you got that reference, you're a real one. Just back and forth passing Theo and Eichel playing catch and Stone sends it cross crease and with Hellebuck standing right there because he had already moved to that right post, I knew as soon as Stone got it over that if Olsen grabbed that pass, it was in the back of the net and sure enough, Vegas Vic buries it to tie the game with less than two minutes left to go. And they still had a power play after that. They didn't do anything with it. And we go to overtime because Winnipeg did a fantastic job with the kill and Vegas didn't have the extra skater anymore because of Hill being pulled because we weren't trying to throw the game away. And in overtime, there was one point where Carlson got cross-checked and fell to the ice and it led to a change of possession, almost, where Winnipeg would have had basically a two on zero, but uh, the refs didn't call it because of probably how that game ended in regulation. And uh, yeah, no, if they wanted to leave without uh, a complete mutiny on their hands again from the Jets and their fans, yeah, no, like I get not calling that there even though that was technically a penalty and you wanna technically call technically penalties, right? But it didn't matter. <laughs> uh, Carlson fighting for that puck on the ice, making sure every last bit of energy after he'd already been out there for a while is going towards getting that puck to anyone out of his teammates or just out of the zone and he did it and it was great and even though Winnipeg charged back in Vegas charged back because they got possession of it and then they got the Jets knocked the puck off of uh, I think it was Theodore stick they were like oh we're clear we can go up the ice let's go for a change but Vegas steals the puck back uh, fantastic feed or skates in he's got a two-on-one passes it over to Barbashev who just sneaked it past Hellebuck's blocker on the right side to go just underneath his arm and in and Vegas absolutely steals a game from Connor Hellebuck they stole both points uh, thank you refs for one <laughs> even though it was all legitimate and thank you Barbashev from Theo for the second point. It was really cute afterwards, Samsonov, uh, who was in the tunnel because of the bench not being big enough for a backup goalie, which I'd think, you know, they would have made adjustments for that to be the case in most arenas by now, but uh, whatever. Barbashev skates over and he sticks his tongue out. And at first, because of the angle, I thought he was at a fan. No, it was at his teammate Samsonov. So that was really, really cute between them to celebrate together Vegas getting a win. 
and that was fantastic. I uh, it was the, I knew I needed to talk about this game, and so thank you for being here. Thank you, Vegas Golden Knights, for after a week of basically no Vegas Golden Knight hockey, coming back and actually getting the win against the arguably best team in the league, Winnipeg Jets. Speaking of best teams in the league, our next game is Saturday against Edmonton, who's definitely not the best team in the league this year, uh, and then Sunday against the Minnesota Wild. The Central, man, really good at the top, and then really not at the bottom, especially because one of those teams was supposed to be up at the top. But, not the point. Uh, yeah, our next two games back and back, back to back, really coming up here quick, but that's gonna be it for game 29. 29. <laughs> Flurry. It, it was weird he hearing Dave Gosher saying Flurry, meaning Hayden Flurry on the Jets, but you know, it is what it is. Still, I know, it's been a while, still. That's gonna be it for game 29's Night Review. Thank you so much for watching, have a good night.